Do their current accounts say this? Do they half the profits? Yeah. Um, the, the Bank of England's annual accounts, as, and the Banking Act itself points out that half of the profits are paid to the Treasury. Right. So if you ask the Treasury itself, it says all of the profits from day-to-day -day business are paid to the Treasury. Well, these are mutually exclusive exactly. possibilities, so, aren't so, they? So that's it. So we have a, a government minister who clearly hasn't got a clue about his own job. Um, and you point this out to them and you get absolute silence and nasty men parking outside your flat and, and annoying you. Um, but what, just for writing these letters, you've had a lot of that, have you? <laughs> well, yeah, enough, oh. enough to, uh, you know, to put you on edge sometimes. Um, and then it goes on and says, or such other sum as is agreed between the Treasury and the bank. So they pay half of it over, or such other sum as is agreed between the Treasury and the bank. In other words, keep your bloody nose out, you know? Nothing to do with you. Um, question is, who receives the other half? Well, perhaps it just goes back into the funds and of the half bank. of what? And perhaps it just goes into the reserve of the bank. Well, it doesn't show in the accounts as such. So, what <clears> are you saying then? Are you saying that there is a secret cabal that somehow has um, a, a stream of money? Yes. From the Bank of England. Yes. Again, in the accounts, it says the overall, of, and this is the Bank of England's annual accounts for the, the last business year. Anyone can check it. The overall effect is that the bank and Her Majesty's Treasury will normally share post-tax profits equally. Do you see the language they're using? Um, and all profits paid to the Treasury, incidentally, are able to be offset by the bank against corporation tax liability anyway. So whatever they're paying over, they're, they're writing off against corporation tax anyway. These are all the technicalities within the accounts, and it sort of backs up the story that although it looks like it's a nationalised company, it's owned privately by unknown people. And don't, now, they, doesn't, don't they have to say in their accounts where this other money goes? Well, no. Why they not? don't. Well, I don't know. Perhaps it, if the Treasury Minister would like to come on and tell you that, then, then we could all go home and say, sorry, I was wrong, there's no conspiracy. Well, this is a formal invitation to the <clears throat> Treasury Minister... Don't hold your breath. Uh, ..to come on my show and please explain where do the profits of the Bank of England go? Who's got the money? Yeah, come on, I'm wrong. Come and show me I'm wrong. You know, they, they, they can't and won't do it, because the second they well, do... Well, maybe is, they will. The cat is out. I please, I please wish that they would. And no doubt they could pick on some of my detail and say, actually, you've got that wrong, because... Well, we'll listen. I'll go, yeah, OK, thanks, thanks for telling us. But they won't come and put the thing right. Um, but is this not a question, then, that everybody ought to be asking? Oh, of course it is. So, I mean, shouldn't everybody be writing to the government, to their MP, and saying, who owns the Bank of England? They should. Where, I mean, are, the, where are the profits of the Bank of England I've tried going? it with my MP. And what did your MP say? Duh. Duh? Duh. <laughs> well, effectively. Um, Incidentally, looking at the accounts, one or two other interesting things came out. Um, so if there's any accountants out there who want to come and enlighten us as to the detail, please do. Um, the Bank of England paid no corporation tax this year. They even received a £22 million refund from the government last year. Um, and that's according to their accounts. So that the profits, and get this, were broadly 199, sorry, £197 million. Now, just ponder that for a second. So they made £197 million. <clears throat> pounds. That's nothing, is it? But, well, it's not... Well, I suppose not for the bank. Better to say the yeah. oil companies. If you, if you check their total profits in the accounts, the amount that they supposedly made last year is broadly equivalent to the amount they actually paid into the staff pension fund. There's a rabbit off. Yeah, that, it seems a bit odd, doesn't it? But mm. even then, even with that £195 million, pounds, you think there'd be some corporation tax to pay? Yeah. The point is, they split it into two systems, and they're clearly hiding one of them. And when questions were asked back in the 70s as to who owns it, they introduced an act to hide that very fact. There's an act that governs this, is there? There's an act that hides who owns the Bank of England. What's this act or hide, called? Or hides their assets. What's this act called? Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't make it <laughs> yeah, it's the... Um, oh, dearie me. Nominees, sorry, the Bank of England Nominees Act, 1977. The Bank of England Nominees Act, 1977. That's to hide the, um, the British royal family's interest in the Bank of England. Oh, the British royal family are mm. co-owners, are they? Mm. 
Well, OK, look, we're going to go for our break now. If you'd like to text in your questions or comments for Mark Cocking, why not do so now to 8777 with the word edge and then your text. And we'll see you all back here again uh, in a few minutes. Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, Mark Cocking. Um, Mark, just before the break there, we were talking about the, uh, this act that governed what could be told to us poor people, the, the public, mm -hmm. about the Bank of England. And this is the... Uh, what, what was this act I called? did forget the name, but it is the Bank of England Nominees Act 1977. The Bank of England Nominees um, Act 1977. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so... Uh, what does it say? A lot of rubbish, really, but there's one, there's one interesting part in it. It's, um, it's basically considered undesirable that the disclosure requirements should apply to certain categories of shareholders. Now, when this is quoted within the Act itself, it does beg the question, who are the shareholders in a nationalised company? If you follow the reasoning, they actually quote shareholders. So this is in the Act? So, so uh, they don't name the shareholders, then? No. The whole purpose of the Nominees Act was to hide the identity of the shareholders, um, and in particular, royal participation. Well, how do you that. know the royal family are shareholders in the Bank of England? I'm not saying they are. I'm saying it's obvious that they are, and if they want to deny it, then all they've got to do is put out a statement and say, we've got nothing to do with the Bank of England. Yeah, but they're not likely to, are no, they? No, they're not likely to. <laughs> that, that, that Nominees Act was created to stop people like me and many others questioning, because they certainly were at the time. Um, and it's considered undesirable that the identities of some of these shareholders should be made. Now, I'd, I'd put it to you, if it were possible to have a nationalised company which also has shareholders that are paid profits, which seemingly are quite variable profits, then is it not also reasonable that we know exactly who these people are anyway? Because if it's, if it's our company, we want to know who owns it. it uh, there is a dichotomy here, because no one can own it if it's our company. It's all a load of rubbish. Well, there's a, there's a guy who just texted me, he's scrolled off the screen now, but a, a chap in Leicester, uh, Richard, I think his name is, uh, who said that Ron Paul in America is trying to pass a, a bill to audit the Federal Reserve. Oh, God, yeah, God bless him. God bless him. Um, <laughs> but uh, perhaps we should have something like that here. Perhaps somebody should audit the Bank of England. Yeah, give me a calculator. I'll go and do it. It's, um, it'd be quite a scary thing to do to actually audit the Bank of England. But, of course, you never will because... And, and being serious now, it never will happen because that's taking the lid off Pandora's box. They won't allow it. And uh, they never will. So. What you have is the Bank of England basically being protected by Royal Charter from the investigations of anyone who cares to investigate who owns it. And then, of course, Tony Blair has manoeuvred into power in 1997. And the very first thing that he does, as if the Bank of England had not messed us up enough, he actually gives them control over monetary policy in this country. Um, oh, well, I think that was Gordon. It was Gordon, it? actually, Gordon yes. Brown. It was Gordon Brown, to be fair, so who is now Prime Minister. Um, so, of course, the, the conspiracy, and I, I'll use that word freely because it is a conspiracy, it's a group of people conspiring to rob this nation of its wealth. And the real wealth is things like gold and land and companies and Everything. minerals and... When, when you consider that every penny of UK tax money that is taken, so your salaries, everyone's salaries, the tax that is taken off of that, every penny of it goes to pay the debt on this money that they loaned to us in the first place. Which they made out of, out of, out of thin air. So you could actually... It's a great business, isn't it? Yeah, you make me Prime Minister tomorrow, <laughs> the first thing I could do would be scrap income tax, because it's not needed, because it's all paying the bankers anyway. In reality, we could keep income tax and be a very wealthy nation. Incidentally, with no inflation, ever. Now, if there's an economist out there who says that's rubbish, get on and tell us and explain why. But I've challenged these people for decades, and there's no economists out there who will or can come on. Usually because they are um, paid by the state anyway, and the second they open their mouths, they'll lose an awful lot. 
Well, somebody else texted earlier and said, well, you know, but 